We're going to look at a few exceptions here to electron configurations. They appear to be exceptions, but in reality, they actually follow the normal patterns of filling that we've uh, already talked about. For instance, we said that the 4S is filled before the 3Ds. We're going to see that that's not completely true. Uh, if we look at the electron configuration for copper, Copper has the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d9. Now, that's the expected electron configuration if you look at it on the periodic table. Now, if that's an electron configuration, and we've already discussed orbital notation, let's look at its orbital notation as well. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d. Now if I fill the electrons that appear to be there in this fashion, When we get to the 4s and we get to the 3ds, we see it apparently as this, if we follow the normal pattern that we've just seen taking place up above with its electron configuration. Now you'll see that it's got a space here in the 3ds and it's filled with the 4s's. That's what it appears to be, but uh, analytical research shows us that that's not the case. Uh, in, in the chemistry lab, we find that copper forms a plus one ion. It also forms a plus two ion. Now, how could it possibly form a plus one ion and uh, have that electron that's in the d orbital, the one that's missing? Well, the only possible way that that can happen is if the available electron is a valence electron, that needs to be shared. And what that is, is this electron here actually is down below, so the 4s has a single valence electron that's available like this. It changes the electron configuration to 3d10 4s1. Now it appears at first to be an exception to everything we're doing, but in reality it is filling the 3ds before it fills the 4s having those four S's up on the shelf, as I indicate them, is a temporary situation. And when we get one away from completely filling that 3D, it's going to take the one that's parked up above, put it where it really belongs, and then finish off the 3Ds. Now the advantage to that is the stability of the atom that is not otherwise achieved, because we're finishing completely a 3D and leaving a 4S half filled. Now that same thing happens again with other atoms. Let me show you another example to that. Okay, chromium does the same thing, but from a different point of view. Chromium has the apparent electron configuration, 4s2, 3d4. Well, wait a minute. Half filled in the d sublevel would be five electrons. We're one short of half filled in its apparent configuration. Well, if you look at that, isn't that the same possibility that we just saw with the last one? If we were to take that 4s and put it down here, is there anything to be gained by that from a stability perspective? The chromium atom actually has the configuration like this. It's got a half filled D sublevel and a half filled 4s sublevel. Now, you remember that electrons are negatively charged and they really don't like to be paired up unless they absolutely have to be, okay, according to Hunt's rule. Now, if that's the case then, the advantage to this is that now I've got six orbitals that are half filled instead of one that's filled, one that's unfilled completely down here. Uh, considerably more stable for the chromium atom to do this. So there are certain atoms that we need to look at and realize that they will do this. It's when we're nearing half filled, or one electron short of half filled, or one electron short of 
filled in that D sublevel. It happens again at about halfway through the F sublevel as well. It happens with uh, chromium and uh, the things that are underneath it in its uh, family. It happens with silver or with the copper and the things that are underneath it in its family as well, copper, silver, and gold. So it's something you need to be aware of that in a standard pattern of filling, when we get one electron short of a filled D sublevel, it pulls it out of that 4S, puts it back in to the D. Now the question then is, after I proceed through chromium, I've got manganese, the next element, if I put one more electron back in, where is it going to put it? The answer to that is it puts it back here when we go to manganese. Now, it's up on the shelf again. This is still half filled. So now when we start proceeding beyond manganese, we can go ahead and put electrons, finishing those until we get, again, as I indicated a moment ago, as soon as we get to the copper atom, as I showed with the other example, now it will take that electron, park it back down in that pattern, so that we have this sublevel fill. So it's a transition back and forth. So that 4S is really just a temporary parking spot for electrons until I can get more of the protons down inside the nucleus to hold those extra electrons a little bit tighter and a little bit closer. When we finish this up then, as we pull the, the next electron back down into zinc, we're finished completely with the three Ds. Now we're finished with the four Ss. The next one that's going to finish will be the four Ps, as we expect. Finishing the four Ss, then the four Ps, but in reality we have actually finished filling the three Ds before we really fill up the four Ss.